Welcome. This is 49A video 3 and this is a section on simple harmonic motion. Uh, what is simple harmonic motion? Simple harmonic motion is an oscillation that occurs when the oscillating system obeys Hooke's law and most people um, meet Hooke's law in physics one when they deal with springs for the first time they're dealing with energy um, Hooke's law says that basically the Hooke's law says that basically the restoring force in the spring is linearly dependent upon the displacement of the end of the spring. It's not the applied force to cause the displacement, it's the force that's basically felt by the spring, inside the spring. And it changes linearly, so if I double the displacement, then I double the force. That's not the same, for example, with gravity. If I double the distance from the center of the Earth once I'm outside the Earth, I get an inverse square relationship, not a, not a, not a linear relationship like this. And the, um, there's a negative sign there. What that means is that if the force is to the right, then the displacement was to the left, and if the force is to the left, then the displacement was to the right. So here's a diagram, here's, here's a, looking from the side, here's a spring with a mass attached, and it's at equilibrium. And if I move it to the right, then the restoring force is to the left, but the displacement was to the right. You see how they're opposites to each other? That's your negative sign. And if I move the object to the left, then the displacement is to the left, but the restoring force is to the right. And because they're both vectors, that matters. So we say an object moves with simple harmonic motion when it obeys Hooke's law. A block and spring combination is a simple harmonic system. The block which is attached to the end of the spring can slide horizontally across a frictionless horizontal table. This system obeys Hooke's law and it obeys uh, Newton's second law. And so when you get two equations like this, and it has to obey both of them at the same time, then the behavior is quite, uh, uh, quite well defined. And what we get is, well, we can say uh, F equals MA and F equals minus KX. And these Fs are the same. So MA equals minus KX. So A is equal to minus K over M times x and that's a vector and that's a vector I don't learn that equation I can get it anytime I like just by combining these two equations let's interrogate it what this is saying is that if I displace the mass more I'll get a bigger acceleration it's also saying if I displace the mass to the right I'll get an acceleration to the left and it's saying that uh, if I dub, if I if I uh, have a stiffer spring, stiffer springs are like the car springs in the back of your car. They judder, they they go quite quickly. Uh, I would expect bigger accelerations. If I have a softer spring, I would expect small accelerations for a given displacement. And if I increase the mass that was being oscillated, if I had a bigger mass, I'd expect smaller accelerations. Well, big masses cause more inertia, so that makes sense. Small masses, quite responsive. Bigger accelerations, that makes sense. So this equation makes sense. Whenever you see a new equation, ask yourself, does it make sense? So that seems to work out. We could also have spoken about the pendulum, but the pendulum is a little bit more complicated, so it's best we deal with, with this guy. And so here's some background questions. In a simple harmonic system, is acceleration constant for different displacements? Well, I know that F equals MA, 
and I know that f is equal to minus kx. The more time you write things down, the more familiar you are with them. ma is equal to minus kx, so a is equal to minus k over m times x. These are vectors. And so I look at this and say, well, I'd like to compare how my acceleration changes for my displacement. And my acceleration is certainly not constant. As x changes, so a changes. And so the answer to this is, is acceleration constant? No, absolutely not. And then the second question is, well, what relationship links acceleration and displacement in a simple harmonic system? And we're given, oh, linear, inverse, parabolic. It's asking me what the mathematical function is here. And this is a linear relationship. And then the third question, in a simple harmonic system, is acceleration constant for different times? Ooh, time is not in this equation. And that might flummox you to begin with. But if you think about it, A is equal to minus k over m times x. But x is a function of time. If we draw it out, what happens is, as time passes, this object oscillates backwards and forwards. So as time passes, this object is having different displacements. And because it has different displacements, it has different displacements at different times. So I can turn around and say, well, A depends upon time because displacement depends upon time. So is acceleration constant for different times? Well, I don't think so. The acceleration will be quite big here and quite small there and quite big here. As time is passing, the acceleration is passing, so it's not constant. Can you see how I'm, I'm using the equation not as a magic formula, I'm using it to give insights? And that's important skills to have. So mathematically, numerically, if you like, we can say a spring and block system oscillates horizontally on a frictionless table. The system displays simple harmonic motion. What is the acceleration of the free kilogram block? So let's draw it. So we have the table. And we have the three kilogram block. And the three kilogram block is, oh, I see it's two meters. Two meters to the left of its equilibrium position. And the spring constant, K is equal to 6 newtons per meter. So what is the acceleration? It's a good idea to make a list. A is what I'm trying to find, and I know a value of k. k is 6 newtons per meter. And my mass, of course, is 3 kilograms. And then my displacement my x. Now in physics 1 we said, in my class anyway, we said delta x for displacement. By tradition we say just x for displacement in Hooke's law. It's just one of those things. People are more used to seeing it that way. But it's a displacement. And so the x is equal to, well it's not just 2. It's minus 2. So then I put these together and I say, well, f equals ma, f is equal to minus kx, ma is equal to minus kx, a is equal to minus k over m times x, a is equal to minus 6 over 3 times is the importance of that being a vector. It's not 2, it's minus 2 because it is to the left. 
So therefore A is equal to, it's going to be minus minus 2 times 2 is 4 meters per second squared. So the answer is 4 meters per second squared, not minus 4 meters per second squared. And sometimes people will, will they'll make that slip. They'll either forget there's a negative sign in the equation or they'll not realize that that displacement, because it's to the left of the equilibrium position, look at its direction. Because it's to the left of the equilibrium position, it's going to be a negative sign. What this is saying is that, oh yeah, my acceleration is pointing in a positive direction. You see it? Good. So, uh, there we have it.